just thought I'd maybe share some some thoughts that I had this morning um, that were a blessing to me, and I believe go along with you know with what we've we've had here this morning. Um, I was had a song come to me, um, the one that says that. There is a river that flows from God above. There's a fountain that's filled with His great love. And I believe we experienced that this morning. I believe that's what Jim was referring to, just a spirit of forgiveness that was flowing. And um, the next verse of that song is the verse that talks about the woman at the well. It says there was a thirsty woman sitting at a well. Her life was ruined and wasted, and her soul was bound for hell. But she met the master who told her of her great sin and said, but he said, but if, if you'll drink this water, you'll never thirst again. And I was reminded of the story of the woman at the well. And, um, you know, I was also reminded of a, of a testimony about a, a young lady that's, you know, that's this been here, how she came back and she said, you know, she said, my life is, what was the words? hopeless and um, you know she could have you know when the when the Lord began to you know to, to deal with her there and talk to her and he said you know if you'd known who it was that was talking to you you could have asked me and I'd have given you living water that you'd never thirst again and um, of course she began to ask some questions and I don't want to get into all that but at one point and she said uh, well you know give me this water and and he says, well, go call your husband. And he, by the Holy Spirit, put the finger on the, on the problem in her life. And she very easily could have said, well, you don't know what you're talking about. Or you got no business talking to me that way. But I, I just sense what Paul was talking about there this, this, this morning. It's, it's when we come to the end of ourselves and we just lay our shotgun down. That's when we can receive. And I don't know, it was a blessing to me that God in his time and he's so patient so kind that um, he's patiently waiting just like you what you're talking about for us to come to the end of ourselves and I'm thankful that that when we do that that he's right there to, to reach out and to help us and uh, and I'm just I don't know maybe it just doesn't make any sense and I hope I didn't miss Lord by getting up here I sure don't want to take away because I believe the Lord is speaking but I just I sensed in my spirit is just something about a us and our and our nature that boy as long as we got one thing left to be proud of we're going to hold on to that one thing we're just not going to let go we're just keep fighting and keep fighting i'm reminded again of what I heard so many times about the guy that's overboard that this drowning and crying out for help and you throw him a life preserver and he says so okay i'm fine now i got this life preserver but never never really is reeled back in and never really rescued you know what i mean god help us to get to the point where we say I let go of everything, everything. I want you. I want your will. I want that fear of the Lord in me. You know, and I, and I understand too, you know, I was talking to my wife a little bit about it coming in this morning. Everything may not just change just like that. You know, it may be a process, but I do believe with all my heart that when we surrender, when we give him, say, Lord, I want you to have my life, that's the beginning of a new life. And things begin to change. And I don't know, I just, you know, I, I see... Uh, well, I saw myself, just to be honest. You know, all the, all the frustration, all the turmoil, all the time knowing something wasn't right, all the time knowing, man, something's got to be better than this, you know, but just continuing to struggle and struggle and struggle. He'll finally get to the point where say, you know what, God, I don't have any answers, and I need some. Lord, please help me, you know. And uh, I don't know if any of that makes any sense. If it doesn't, y'all please, y'all feel free to let me know that. And, you know, I'm sorry if, it, if not. But I love the Lord, and I believe he's doing something, you know. I believe he's doing something in my life. And, um, and I believe you, I don't believe this is just for one person. I mean, I believe that there's people that need help, you know, but they're continuing to just wrestle in their own strength, you know. And the Lord's just pleading with us, you know. Don't you know I got something better for you? I got some living water. I got something. You can come out here till you turn blue in the face and pitch your pitcher down in that well and reel it back up, but it's never going to really satisfy. You know, now you may still have to work for a living. You may still have to deal with things, whether it's marriage relationships or other kind of relationships. They are hard. You have to work at it. But with the Lord on your side, that makes all the difference. See, you know, then you got something to draw from. You know, I don't know if that's the Lord or not. If not, I'm sorry.
Praise God, it's good to be with y'all today. I'll tell you a little bit of an experience in my life, you know, talking about this same thing. I like the illustration you gave there from Watch Me Knee about the man struggling. And uh, scripture came to me, you know, there's a way that seems right to man, but the ways thereof are the ways of death. And, you know, you can take any given life, you know, it doesn't matter how a person carries out their life, you know, they could be rich, they could be poor, homeless, you could uh, be a, a philanthropist, you could be stingy. There's a thousand and different ways, a thousand and one different choices you can make in your life, but the same result is this, you're going to die. Everybody comes to that same place in their life where your physical life just gives out and there's nothing more that can sustain it. And, you know, the grace of God, you know, gives us the revelation that, you know, our life here on this earth is temporal, but there's a life beyond this earth that's eternal. And when God gives us that revelation and realizes that the choices we make in this life will depend on whether we face eternal judgment by, you know, God's wrath or we spend eternity with Him. And, you know, I've grown up in the church and, you know, I thought I had all the answers. I know all the right things to say if somebody says something to me. I know the exact words to say, you know, to make them think I'm doing all right, you know. But, uh, you know, the Lord was really, you know, pricking my heart and convicting me and showing me my need for Him. And whenever He does that, you know, it's like the man who finds himself in the deep end of that water hole and he realizes he doesn't have the strength to save his own life, you know. And that when that realization came to me, you know, I was... I was struggling, and you know, for for a Christian, you know, who's grown up in the church, you know, what does struggling look like? You know, when you realize that if you don't do something, you're going to drown, you know, the first thing the devil starts putting to your mind, well, I got to pray more, I got to read my Bible more, I got to do this, I got to do that, you know, I got to, and I just, you know, make a mess of things, you know, I fall deeper and deeper into the traps of sin and listening to despair, and I'm tempted to despair in my own life. And really it came down to, I was not trusting God. You know, do you really trust God that when you give up everything in your life, when you put away these self-righteous efforts, and you just simply call on God and say, Lord, give me faith, God, that you are there, and that you're a rewarder of those who diligently seek you, Lord. You know, the Lord said, any man who comes to me, you know, all that the Father has given me will come to me. And any man who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. If you come to God, he will not cast you out. But when you come, you must have faith. He said, any man who, you know, if any man comes to me, he must believe that I am. First of all, you must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I was just thinking, you know, do you really trust God that when you give up and cry out, Jesus save me, that he will do that? You know, do, are you willing to give up all those self-righteous efforts? Just, you know, trust God that whenever He brings you to the end of yourself, that when you give up, He will truly save you. And that's, you know, I had to ask the Lord. I said, Lord, give me faith that this is true. And the Lord did increase my faith. And He helped me to stop all those self-righteous efforts. And once I did that, you know, the life, it came in. You know, as I go to church and as I pray, there's true life there. And I just thank God for His life that he imparted to me. That's just my testimony. I pray that it would fill somebody who's struggling with this. Praise God.